Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for every life that's here. Thank you for every person who will hear me or see me through whatever means that we have today. And Lord, I just ask that, as I often do, is you touch our hearts today and that would you change our minds and would you bring us more into the conformity uh, of your will and your purpose for our life. Amen? Um, the, the title for my message today is uh, uh, interesting because it comes from Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And, and, and it goes on, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So I've taken that the, you know, behold, I stand at the door and knock from there. And I want to say that to every one of you. There is a sense I feel today to say to you, behold. By the way, this wasn't said to, this is often used often to say to a non-Christian, you know, God's knocking on your door. This was actually said to a church. So it wasn't to a, as we often use in an evangelistic sense, you know, God's speaking to you, he's knocking on the door of your heart. No, no, this is talking to the church of Laodicea. So I feel to say to you young lives today, you young adults, behold, I believe the Lord is standing at the door and knocking. When the leadership team asked me to come down, uh, they, they gave me uh, an open slatter to speak what was on my heart and sense from the Lord. But she, they sent me the prophetic word. Now, did they send it out to you? Okay. That prophetic word, it came, what, 2019, 20, I think, leaders? Some of that. And they said that they felt that that was still very uh, poignant for, for you as a group. So I'm going to read it out to you because I want to tell you what the Lord said to me out of that. And that's really the sum, uh, the guts, if you like, of what I want to say to you today. It's summed up in that word. And it says, God is turning a new page in relation to young adults. That he was breaking mindsets restoring relationships and right ways of relating and thinking among the young adults. God desires this because he, he wants to pour out his spirit, he wants to pour it out on his sons and daughters. So I got that and I read that and, and I pray uh, about all I'm going to speak and so I was asking the Lord, you know, I need this word, give me this word, you know, they want this word. And the Lord said, I'm not going to give you another word. I've already spoken. And I went, yeah, that's not helping me. I'm going to go down there and speak. You've given them this word. That's great. But what's the word you want me to bring them, to teach them? He said, I've already spoken. I've said it. I went, okay. So I prayed into this word. And as I prayed into this word and pondered it, the Holy Spirit began to give me insight in terms of what he's actually saying to you. So he, he began to show me what the content and how to unpack the nature of this word. So today, what I want to do, I want to actually dive into this word with you. And I want to look at it from a, a I suppose, an apostolic prophetic perspective for you. And, and because this word's got three key statements contained within the word, and, and the structure of their contents have an order to them to be able to inform you of what God is really saying to you. And I've put all my notes in, not all of them, most of my notes in the little handout you've got. And there's a few blanks there. I hope you've got to you can fill it in. If not, use your phone and just jot it down. So this, this word really, uh, there's three key statements contained within this word. It carries very important conditional characteristics that I think need to be lifted out. Because hidden within this word are, are some kingdom nuances, if you like, that point to the Holy Spirit, uh, his intentions for you in getting you ready for what I would see a release of fresh and new kingdom assignments. Assignments as a group, but also individually, and, and he wants you to be ready for this because he wants you to be able to not just 
uh, initiate these things in the Holy Spirit, he give, but he gives them to you. He wants you to steward them for the kingdom purposes. So how about we jump into it, okay? Because I think God has got some very uh, individual as well as group things to say to you. So the first statement in your notes. God, and it says this. So I, I, there's three statements. I don't want to unpack them. I want to dig into them. And then I'm going to draw it to a close, okay? The first statement, God is turning a new page in relationship or in relation to young adults at servants. Now, new page terminology is about all about moving on. It's all about creating positive change. It's about God wants to release in you new activities of his spirit, but also kingdom things. So this, it's not, I'm just turning a new page. There is a, there's a new movement. There's a movement of God within, within this grass. He wants you to be, uh, be able to be ready to change. So it's a positive change. Now, there are two questions that need to be considered here. The first question, what new page does God want, and the blank comes off, what does God want you to, what does God want to turn in my life? So each one of you should be thinking as I'm speaking to the day and looking at this word, the first question that I would ask, what personal change does God want in my life? Because he wants it. This is your word. This is the word he told me to reinforce to you. That there is not another word, <laughs> for me anyway, to spring to you other than to unpack this. So the first question is, you know, what new chapter is about to break forth for you? Because there is one. And he wants each of you to be in a position, possible, best, best possible position to be able to engage with it. So each of you need to ponder and pray over this because God wants to change something in your life. It's not like I'm saying it. This is a word that's been around with you for about a year now. So that's the first question. Second question out of that first statement. What new page says he want to turn in the group's life? So the first question was an individual one. So as a group, as leaders, as a whole group, what does he want to change in the context of the young adult group? To me, the Holy Spirit is indicating this, this new chapter. There's a new chapter about the dawn. There's something about the dawn. It hasn't dawned yet. It's dawning, so almost. And, and he wants the group to be ready, prepared, ready, and willing. And you need to be willing to rise up to the challenge. If you're not, the challenge will pass you. Individually, corporately. And he wants you to be prepared, but he wants you to be expectant. Like a, not like a, a mother who carries a baby. Expectant. So there is this positive change that God wants to bring to you individually and as a group. And you need to be able to enter into this expectantly before it happens. So begin to walk in the spirit of it, because that's what this word is. It's a spirit word to you, a Holy Spirit inspired word to you, to be able to walk in the spirit of this word. Because there's positive change coming your way that God wants to bring. Fresh opportunities that he wants to actually dawn in this new page, this new life, this new dimension for you. And it's going to greatly impact your life and also your mission, personally and as a group. There's a personal dimension and there's also a group dimension. So that's the first statement. You with me still? The second statement in your notes, God, God's heart is to restore right relationships and right ways of relating amongst the young adults. Now, I'm just lifting out the Holy Spirit word and breathing into this what I sense the Lord is saying to you. Two questions 
to ask here. And these two questions have two different aspects or characteristics to them. First one, A. One is a condition question, if you're filling in the blanks. A condition. One's a condition and the other one's a consequence, a consequential. So there's a condition question and a consequence question that's attached to that second statement that I want to restore relationships, that I want right ways of relating amongst you. The first question is a condition question. It's personal and it's, and it's to do with a call to the heart. So it's a calling of the heart. It's a call to response of your heart, each person. Need to be able to individually, in your own way, open your own heart up to what the Lord is saying. And it goes something like this. How am I in my interpersonal relationships with others? How am I in terms of my corporate relationship with my friends? within this group. We're talking about in this group. Not talking about out there only, but if it's going to impact this group, it's going to impact out there. But I'm talking about this is about the group. Because this word is to the group of young adults and servants. And each one of you sitting here and others that form this group. How's my interpersonal relationships? Am I willing to flesh out Jesus' words in John 15, 15? Am I prepared in this group for this new page, for this new dawning that God wants to bring forth in my life and the group's life? Am I prepared to walk as Jesus said in John 15, 15? There is no greater love than this, than a man or a woman lay down their life for their friend. And if you don't have friends in this group, then you better find them. And if you're going to talk about laying down your life, if you're not laying down your life in this group, then you're not going to lay it down in any other group. Because this will be one of the easiest groups to lay it down in. Because you've got others who are actually laying down their life for you. So the Lord's saying something here. Are you prepared? What am I prepared to commit to, Lord? That's the sort of question you need to be asking yourself. What am I prepared to commit to, Lord? Lord, am I willing to take this to heart? Am I willing? Am I willing to flesh this out with my brothers and sisters in this group? So that's the condition question. That's the condition of my heart. What am I prepared to do with this word that the Lord has spoken? Second is a consequence question. It too calls from a response. There are ways in which I sense the Lord wants you to be able to be in this new season in a position to connect with and team up with others within the group. To be able to form a greater expression of what the group's life is going to be in this new season and the mission that God wants to flow out of this group. So... You get the first one right, then the consequence of that is that God's going to then bring something of his kingdom purposes through that channel to lift the mission and life of the group. So what am I going to prepare to do personally will actually impact what God wants to do through his kingdom purposes in the group. So it's a consequence question. It flows out of the first one. So that's the second statement. Now the third statement. God wants to get this. Not fix, but break mindsets. And old ways of thinking and relating. Now, there's a double emphasis here on relationships because we've already talked about relationships. So he's already mentioned that he wants this relationship thing sorted out between you and him and you and others. Now he's actually saying it again because there is something more important here in the context of what God wants to do. So there's a double emphasis on relationships. 
Relationships are so important to mission in terms of kingdom mission. So important in terms of worship. So important, important in terms of your witness to the world. That's why God is actually emphasizing it here. So what's going on here? Well, it has to do with the three key, fra- key, three key phrases in this sentence. And they are mindset, in your blank, thinking and relating. So mindset, thinking and relating. So let's take them one at a time. One, mindset. This has to do with an, est- an established set of attitudes. God wants to break some of your attitudes, friends. Sorry. You invited me here. Attitudes that shape your, an individual's paradigm. You know what a paradigm is? It's basically, you bring it down, it's your basic operating system. It's, the, it's, the, it's how you view the world, how you interpret the world, how you engage and relate to the world, how you live within the context. That's your paradigm. God wants to shift. No, he wants to break some of those in a way so he wants to re-establish things. Now, according to this word, it would seem that, that the Holy Spirit wants to reset, commit, reset individual paradigms and he wants to reset the group's paradigm. Therefore, what kind of things does he want to adjust in your world? What kind of things are the Holy Spirit, as you start to walk through what I've written in those notes so you can take away and pray into them, what does he want you to do to change your heart? What's the condition and the consequence? What's that going to do in relationship to how you see the world and relate to the world? Understand this new mindset is not only about, you know, just individuals, as significant as it is, but it's going to have a major influence positively uh, within the group. The whole group dynamic will begin to change as individual paradigms shift in a proper way. And it will have an impact not just in terms of how you relate in the group, but how you then relate through the group to what God's going to call you to do. Now, you need to be aware, friends, and you probably know this, but I want to re-emphasize this. When we're talking about moves of the Holy Spirit in past years and generations. Understand in the past generations, these are resulted from a a sense of um, desperation. So real moves like this happen through a desperateness, a, a, a desperateness of the heart of people that they are so desperate, it then turned them to prayer, fervent prayer. Acts of humility that came as a result of repentance, which then gave rise to a whole new level of obedience that then out of that obedience birthed new paradigms and kingdom purposes. That's how moves of the Spirit work. And that's what God is speaking to you about. There's a new page. There is this something that God is birthing. There is this, there's, the first thing is the mindset's got to change. There's a breaking. There's a shaping to get to this point. There needs to be a desperateness to be able to follow this through because God wants to birth this thing. It's not just let's get a new, you know, a new buzzword for 2021. You know, we get to the end of the year and say, what's our new thing for next year? Well, I'm telling you, I prayed into this for, for, for weeks really, because I knew it was coming. And, and I got nothing other than I've already spoken. So this is really I have already spoken word that I'm speaking and reinforcing to you today. So according to the Holy Spirit, he wants to renew, he wants to reposition, and he wants to repurpose things regarding you individually and as young adults. How exciting is that? <laughs> I mean, it, to me, when I'm at, at, the, at the, you know, uh, the front of this and looking at this from God's, it, it gives, gave me tantalizing glimpses in, of the what-ifs and what could be. 
that God is actually speaking to you about. Tantalizing glimpses in terms of what might lie ahead for you. If you allow him individually to do this and then corporately to pick it up in your life and your mission. Next word is thinking. Proverbs um, 33, no, 23, 7 says, As one thinks in their heart, so he is. Okay? As one thinks, he is. Now, I've got some history here for you. Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius once said, We believe what we think about. We believe what we think about. How true is that? And by the way, in a, this 20. 21st century, that's a lot of people think that they can come up with their own truth. Right? What's true now? Well, what is true for you is true for you. What is true for me is true for me. That's how the world looks at things today, don't they? Relative truth. So, you know, again, the scriptures are very clear. As a person thinketh in the heart, so that's who they are. This uh, British author, James Allen, wrote, you are, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. Or an Angl Anglican bishop out of Africa warned his congregation one Sunday morning, do not think that what your thoughts dwell upon is of no matter of consequence. Your thoughts are making you daily. I like that. God wants to change your thinking because he knows that your thoughts are making you daily. That's why this paradigm shift is so important for you, individually and as a group. So the truth is, you know, your thoughts become, uh, how would I say it here, your thoughts become the parent of deeds. Therefore, sooner or later, false thinking brings about wrong conduct. So your thoughts become the parent of the deed. It would seem from the word that along with breaking mindsets, the Holy Spirit wants to get in and change some worldly, woolly, and wrong. Three W's, that's easy. You're going www dot, okay? Here's your www dot. He wants to change some worldly, woolly, and wrong thinking in you, 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 and you, and in the group. It seems to me that the Holy Spirit wants to do this. He wants you to come to a position of being more open to walking in the ways of God. Not just connected to the words of God, intellectually, but to walk in the ways of God. We don't, do, we don't emphasize enough of that in the church, walking in the ways of God. If you do a study of the Bible, you'll find that it comes out a lot in the Old Testament and the New Testament about walking in the ways of God. And to walk in the ways purposefully to adopt his new way of living. God wants you to adopt a way of living different to where you've come from for this new season that you're entering into. Now you might ask me, hey Ben, um, <laughs> how, do you, how do we do that more purposefully? It sounds great, but how do you do it? I'm glad you asked me. Okay, let me break it down to a, its basic step. I like things basic. If I can't get it right the first time, then I'm going to make a mistake. Okay? So the Lord knows he's got to deal with me really point by point. So basically, it comes down to one biblical principle of all the other biblical principles that are still good. It comes down to one word, and that one word is lordship. What is it? Lordship. You can say that. Who actually is Lord in your thinking. That's what he's asking you to do to ask yourself. Who is Lord in my thinking? When you're alone and you put your head on the pillow at night, who is Lord in your thinking? For is he the Lord over all your thinking or is not Lord over your thinking? 
is not Lord at all over your thinking. And it's, off, it's like the Lord wants to re, readjust and redefine and renew that in your thinking. There, there is some woolly thinking in you. There is some worldly thinking in you. And there's some wrong thinking that he is speaking to me to tell you that you need to sort out. Relating. Third one. Here the Holy Spirit is reinforcing this word because we've already talked about relating. So I said, Lord, this is interesting. You, you're now, why, is, why are you emphasizing it? You've been emphasizing this in the word. You spoke about it in the first part of the word, but now in the second part of it, you bring it out very strongly. It would seem the Lord has, has, a, has, has a, a deeper reason behind this. Because it's, and it goes on in the second part of that word he gave you. He said, I want to release a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit within you. Aha, uh -huh. that gave me an understanding of what he wants to do here. Now, such an outpouring will bring with it, you know, fresh, you know, kingdom purposes and, 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 and there will be greater impact. But God, God's saying, but you've got to get this relationship right. So this is what your response, I think, should be. Lord, show me the state of my heart. Now, sometimes I pray that, and I would say I pray that often. Lord, I can't read my heart as good as you can. So today, Lord, show me the state of my heart. And in Psalm 39, verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Romans 8, 27. He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. So, Lord, search my heart, because you're telling me that you want to change things, so that you know the mind of the Spirit that lives within me. So search my heart that I might know what the Spirit is saying in me. You get the point? And the Holy Spirit helped me and then say, like I do, Holy Spirit, help me to submit all my ways of loving, relating, and thinking to you. By the way, this should not just be a one-time prayer. <laughs> this should be a walk. Look, I have been walking with the Lord for 40 years now. Can I tell you, this is a basic, this is my basic come back to Lordship prayer. This is it. Because, you know, I have to deal with the three those three W's as well, you know. We all do in life. In uh, John 13, 34, 35, Jesus said, His followers would be known by their love for one another. Love for one another. Can I say, the, the enemy cannot defeat that. But the world will notice it. That's why this whole emphasis, the world will notice the difference, the distinctiveness that you carry individually and as a group. Now remember this also. When the church of Jesus Christ started at Pentecost with the giving of the Holy Spirit, they met in homes what have we been doing this last year? Met in homes, among family, friends, neighbours, co-workers, as well as the person of peace. Do you know who the person of peace is? The person of peace is not a believer. The person of peace is who's open to, to what God might be doing. And you find that in Luke chapter 10. You see, read a story about how Jesus sent out to 72 and he, he said, find the person of peace. That, that other people. So, you know, God in his way um, knows the people that you need to meet and they often people of peace. But remember, the meetings of the Holy Spirit in, in the Acts at the beginning was family, friends, co-workers and these men and women of peace. Their relationships were holy. They, they, they shared a common focus. There was a growing respect and an honour for one another in the fellowship and across the body of Christ. 
they became known, get this, back then, people of the way. What does God want to do with you? A new way of relating and living. And, and the people noticed this new way. The world noticed them. And the Greek word for this is koinonia. Fellowship, relationship, koinonia. And, it's, and, it, and, and the, to unpack that in the right way, you could say it like this. It's um, an intimate spiritual communion. Uh, an intimate, God wants to build this intimate personal communion with you individually and then corporately that, that he might then participate with you individually and corporately that out of that he might birth the way in terms of the services, the purposes that God has for you. That's how it happens. And, and, and it was into this rich tapestry of God-honoring God relationships that answered prayer happened. Why does God want this? Because he wants to see more answered prayer amongst you. Because that's what happened. There were people who received personal words in this situation. Um, they were encouraged in the Lord. There were healings. There were miracles. Miracles happened. And, and there were people coming to the Lord daily. That's why the Lord is re-emphasizing this relationship aspect. That's the reason I think the Lord wants to underline this, the importance of this word that he's spoken to you. He wants to restore relationships and right ways of relating and thinking among you. Because obviously it's not deep enough yet for what God wants to do individually and corporately. In the Acts church, this sort of life was uh, Christianity 101. This was normal. This is the new way of living. And God, I think, wants to lift you individually and as a group up into this new way of living in this new season. You are distinctive, but you're not distinctive enough according to the word of the Lord. There's something he wants out of each one of you because it's each word, as I said, right at the beginning in the first statement, it's a condition and there's a consequence and it flows out from you individually right through to you as a group. Another scripture that really hit me when I started to pray for this weekend, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, but it came out, out of the time as I was praying for you. And it just rocked me because it's a scripture that I've always carried around with me, but I've actually not really spoken a lot on, you know, like taught on it or uh, unpacked it with people. And it's from Zechariah 4 verse 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. And it came upon me with such a rush in the midst of this preparation. And in essence, for you, in this part, tomorrow it's a little bit different, but in this part, um, in essence, he wants me to say to you, your strength and your prowess, your strength and your prowess will not be enough in this new season ahead. So all your gifts, all your talents, all your strength, the prowess, all that is good, but it's not enough. In the sense that, only the Spirit will be able to move through you in a way it's going to come about by His powerful anointing through and on your life. Not to throw the others out, but you can't rely on them. So you want to say, how does that relate to me still today? Well, let me take you to three scriptures. And I'm running out of time, but I'm going to bring them as closely as I can in to make sense. Paul in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought by at a price. Therefore, honour God with your body. 
1 Corinthians 3 16 talks about that you individually and as a group here are a temple of God in which the spirit dwells individually collectively Ephesians 2 21 to 22 Paul says again there you've been built and joined together as a holy temple of the Lord these are really powerful word illustrations we individually and collectively are what the temple of the Lord in the earth come on now come on we we I you this is the reason why this word is important there's something he's going to restore reshape redefine in this temple for this temple to rise up in a distinctiveness and in a new way for new exploits your prowess and your strength is okay but it's not going to be enough your heart might have got in the way so you need the Holy Spirit ask God to read your heart so you can get the things out of your heart that need to be get out of your heart so he can put the things in your heart that need to be in the heart that's why this word is so important to you sorry I forget about you over there but I'm not really I've got you in my eye and when we think about being a temple of the Holy Spirit you know it should motivate us it should at least bring us to an understanding that whoa you know we're not our own we've been bought with a price the price cost a life the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and this one single truth or should motivate us to keep this temple what pure this is the issue friends purity it should motivate us to make sure that we glorify God in our body that's the, why the Lord is emphasizing this to you also no significant move of God has ever happened without first the Holy Spirit cleansing renewing and restoring his earthly temple and in a sense what I want to say to you he wants to make you uh, fit for purpose his kingdom purposes in fact we have become if you like you and I in, in, individually and corporately we've become the meeting place of God in the earth do you know that? come on just stop park there for a moment with me you have become the meeting place of God in the earth that's why this word to you is so rich and so important that he wants to break, shape and renew this new page terminology it sounds nice no it's more than just nice there is a positive change that needs to happen that needs to be brought into your life individually and corporately because there is this renewal of his temple because you are the meeting point of God in the earth we need to glorify God in our bodies you know part of the process of is cleansing this temple may include removing some idols maybe that we've held on to and I don't have time to unpack what those idols might mean but you need to ask the Holy Spirit to do are there idols in my world now that should not be there because I've allowed these things to come in they're not holy not beautiful but they become idols because you won't be able to draw closer if they are in the way and only you need to know where they are you don't everyone doesn't need to know that but you and the Holy Spirit need to do business on that so let me exhort you in this because it's very personal yet corporate glorify God in your body for indeed each one of you 
as you listen to me now today, each one of you are the temple of God's Spirit. Right now, wherever you are, on camera, listen to me, your headphones, whatever, you are the temple of the Spirit of God. When you come together as a living temple, he does things, answers prayer, demonstrates power, and people get saved, and things change because he's allowed to occupy this temple in a fresh way, right now. Now, life's not easy, is it? It is down here, is it? In Sydney. Man, life's not easy. As you grow older, you think, well, I've been walking with the Lord, it's going to be easy. It ain't easy peasy at all. It's never easy. It wasn't easy back then when all these words were written that I'm talking about this morning in the early church. It's not easy now. And you probably discovered that in your own world. You know, we get caught up in daily life, don't we? And if you're one of those people who's a bit of an eight-class personality, you're always on the go, you're always doing stuff. And even if you're not, you still actually get caught up in whatever your world is. And so, you know, we don't often think about the fact that we are the temple of God, do we? When's the last time you've thought about you are the temple of God, the meeting point of God in the earth? It wasn't this morning when you got up, I bet. But that's the temple that God wants to occupy. That's why this word to you last year is so important in this year, because it's not over yet. It hasn't even started yet. Now, I'm as guilty as the next person here. That's why I often seek to refresh my heart with these same living words that I'm saying to you today. Lord, I don't know my heart, but you do. Is there anything in my heart today that is an offense to you? Show it to me that I might offer it to you, cleanse it. And then I say, Lord, what woolly worldly thinking has this brought into my world? I'm justifiable to sit in front of the TV and watch so much because the world's gone parking now, you know, like we've got nothing else to do. And then channels become blurred and programs become things and you're looking at stuff that you shouldn't look at. Or you're doing things that you shouldn't. Or you're thinking about things. We all get caught up in life. I'm not having a go at anybody. But what I am saying, when the Spirit of God is speaking, we need to listen. And this is such an important word because he wants your WWW changed. Because he wants to visit in a way individually and corporately that actually does birth this word in you about the Spirit youth on my sons and my daughters a spirit now how sometimes it's hard to pray do i have any people do anyone else hard you did it now can i say the best thing to do if you don't have the gift get it and someone can pray for you today tongues praying in tongues is my greatest circuit breaker you know what a circuit breaker is cuts things off okay and I can cut off from that which not I should not to that which I need to. Often, that's one of the things that helps. Make it a priority as you go into, okay, Lord, what's my response today out of this message? In the days, in the weeks ahead, when I'm not here and no one else is here and this is a word that's rattling around and it needs to do something more than just rattle around. It actually needs to find flesh and blood yours when Jesus was asked about when the kingdom of God would come he floored his listeners with this particular answer and it's found in Luke 17 20 to 21 they asked him about when's his kingdom going to pop out when, when are we going to see it 
We've been waiting for it. All our fathers and our grandfathers have been waiting for it. And you are here now, Lord, so we're all expecting it's going to come. And these are the words to us today. The kingdom of God does not come with observance, nor will, it say, nor will they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Woo. So it's not out there, but within us. It's among us. This, con this kingdom is among us. Where two or more are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. So it's not out there somewhere, it's among you. It's not out there in a church, it's not just out there in another collection of group of people, it's amongst us. That's why he wants these mindsets, thinking and relating uh, these words that are crucial to you right now. For mindsets, relating and thinking either um, impede or advance uh, God's kingdom purposes in your midst. That's why he wants to break mindsets. That's why he wants to change your thinking. That's why he wants to do something fresh and dynamic in your relationships because if they are not, they either impede or they advance the kingdom of God. And if the early church and churches that have moved through the things of the Spirit hadn't done these things, then they would not have had the answers to prayer. They would not have seen the miracles. They would not have advanced the exploits of the kingdom that we read about in the Acts of the Apostles. Therefore, as I close off, for God to turn this new page in you, for God to establish this new paradigm in relationships with you, for him to repurpose these new ways for his kingdom amongst you, it starts right here. Can you all just take your right hand wherever you are? It starts right, and say to yourself, it starts right here, right here. It starts here, in this earthly temple. Why? Because he wants to dwell here. Say to yourself, the Spirit wants to dwell here. If you're a follower of Jesus today, the Spirit wants to dwell here. And this word is going to come forth in your life if you apply the principles that I have enunciated today out of that word, not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, said the Lord. Are we allowed to stand? Yeah. Yeah. So can we stand, please? Father, I want to thank you this morning for each life here that is the temple that you want to fill with your spirit. And I thank you for this group that, of dynamic young adults as a group. And that in that temple you want to expand your life, your purposes, your ways of loving and relating and living different to what has been so that you might take them into this new page. Thank you that you gave this word. Thank you that each one of them can connect to this word. So give each one of them the power and the ability to flesh out this word. As I've spoken this morning. And that they, Lord, can actually expectantly, with this heart of joy, move into what it is that God has for them individually, 
because you want to do things individually. There's some big things God wants to do in individuals so that he can change and do things in this group. So Lord, I'm just going to read out your word to them again as I finish this morning. And season this word again with freshness in, each, in every life. God is turning a new page in relationship in relation to young adults. That he is breaking mindsets, restoring relationships, and right ways of relating and thinking among young adults. God desires this because he wants to pour out his spirit and to pour it out on his sons and daughters. He wants to pour it out afresh upon you. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you take up that challenge this morning in your life. And remember, you are the meeting point of God. You are the temple of God in the earth. And it's um, so many other things in our world rob us from that paradigm. That's the paradigm that God wants you to hold on to and grow in and flesh out in your day and your life. Lord bless you.